I was definitely glad to see Kyle open up the offense a lot God. because we saw that the Tampa Bay game was extremely watered down mm. and it was just kind of, it seemed like more of like a clock control approach and he wasn't really, I don't know if he didn't trust Jimmy or what it was, but I don't know. It was just kind of, it was almost tough to watch a little bit, but obviously the defense is pretty much carrying the team right now. And I really think this last game with Cincinnati, I think Kyle, I think you put him, he put a little more trust into Jimmy and I think they open up the playbook a little bit. And I think you're seeing his confidence kind of build. And that's, I mean, he's got weapons everywhere. Are you listening? Damn. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Sports here, representing the Liner and proudly representing the Liner Empire organization worldwide. Where 49er football just never comes to an end. Fam, I don't need to ask you how you're doing today. I know how you're doing today. 2-0 on the season. Are you kidding me? Appreciate you allowing me to come in and holler and scream about the 49ers. Ah! Fam, be honest. Even I've been honest. Are you surprised with where we are right now? 2-0? Start both games on the East Coast? I'll be honest with you now because I wasn't honest with you earlier. We're family. I thought I could tell you the truth right now. Fam, I, you know what? I, I thought best we do this one on one. Now, it's not because of a lack of faith. What it is, is our record traveling east is not a good one, even when we had strong, strong teams like we do now. Go to the East Coast, get a butt whooping, and, and, and it didn't matter how good we were, right? So, what do we do this time? First, go to the East Coast, Tampa Bay, it's blazing hot. Five million degrees. 49ers, they came, they seen, and they conquered. And then the brilliance of Shanahan. We're not leaving the time zone. We'll just roll all over to Ohio. And we'll just stay within a place where we can still sleep normally and get up and do what we do. For the body's sake, we'll be better off. They do it. By the way, Kyle Shanahan plans another trip later on in December. Uh, when we play both the Saints and the Ravens in December, uh, they plan on spending the 10 days out in that area, too. <laughs> I don't know, Richard Sherman, some other people may say, hey, Kyle, 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 man, this is like the family don't really appreciate all this, you know what I'm saying? So they'll probably bring families along next time, too. So the guys may not be able to bond as tight uh, this next time. But you know what? If you got children, though, I think they go to school and everything like that, ah, they'll work it out. But anyway, they will include uh, family members in the next trip, so I, I feel like they're going to do that, which is a good thing because the 49ers, if that's going to work, we have not won two games on the East Coast, let alone back to back. And gosh, you no, know, I mean, it's back 80s, 90s, something like that, early. So here we go. And now we're coming back home to play in the wonderful, sweet confines of Levi's Stadium. I can't believe I said that. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Something's going on in Santa Clara. But for the 49ers, also, the Empire, salute. We were like, Matty B said, those two road win games, it was like being at home. We said, they look up and they just see seas of red and gold, yelling and screaming, defense, go Niners and everything. That Empire. Look at you! You got a reason to be proud other than just being a member of the Empire. You did your job! So there you go, it helped the 49ers out. I think it did inspire them. Look at vicious. So there you go, we're looking good. I gotta tell you though, uh, the Jimmy G thing now, see he's still getting flack. Uh, you know what though, I don't care what anybody says. Since 2017, when Jimmy G first came on the scene, when he looked just absolutely brilliant, and then he fell down a little bit as he was trying to learn the playbook. Well, the whole team was trying to learn the playbook at the same time, right? So he's been getting a lot of flack because of the misunderstanding of that. This particular game, the second game in particular, you can see where G is starting to finally look like Jimmy G. I mean, it's some nice passes. And some of the things that you expect from him, like what we've seen him do before, they were coming about. This is only the beginning. I have a feeling you will see a better G this week and the weeks to come as the whole team gets in sync and they start to click. Chemistry is all right. Timing is better. We've seen it all this week. Ryan Clark of ESPN says that's not what happened. 
They have a thing where they have pretenders and things like that, right? He says Jimmy G only looked that good because he wasn't sharp because the fact that everything was schemed. Okay, you know, that's okay. I, I understand that. But I still say Jimmy G is still starting to look more like Jimmy G. So, fingers crossed that he comes out and looks a little sharper than he did last week because one thing I will admit, he's not looking as sharp as he should because we've seen him look a lot sharper. Quick, crisp, never making a mistake. Maybe the defense had a little bit to do with that. At any rate, I'm proud where the 49ers are going right now. Looking good. All the receivers are run game. We got a run game. I'm telling you, look at Mostert and Breda. Could they be one of the best one-two combinations? And the hitman, Jeffrey Wilson. I call him a hitman because when it comes down close to the goal line, bring in Jeffrey. Wilson comes in. Just move out the way, y'all. Just give me six inches, man. I'm coming in. They can't do nothing about it. <laughs> I love this running back room. And I was talking about uh, Santa Clara. I, you know what? Santa, the city of Santa Clara has a grievance going on with the 49ers. That's uh, been pretty much well publicized now. You probably already know about it, right? Now, apparently, they're accusing the 49ers of not handling non-football-related activities within the facility very well. Uh, some of the concerts that are going on, which I had no idea the 49ers were actually uh, behind those concerts. I thought that was the city of Santa Clara and various promoters putting those on and renting the stadium out from whomever. I, maybe the 49ers are conducting these. Don't quote me on that. But I do know the 49ers are being held responsible for some of the sloppiness that's going on with those concerts and things like that that have nothing to do with football. So, of course, since Jed has not paid some monies or something like that, uh, they're complaining. So you know what? Here's the way I feel about that. I hope, this I hope this fight starts to rage and get out of control. The 49ers have a 35-year lease with that group. I don't like Levi Stadium. And we've all talked about this. There's something really, really wrong with that place. And it doesn't bode well with the team. I mean, some of these injuries and things we're getting, I understand it could be a superstition that all the teams are being devastated by injuries and they're not playing in Levi Stadium. But still, we didn't have all this weirdness happen until we moved into there. We didn't start going downhill until we moved into that place. So you tie that all together, it's a bad luck place. So when we get so bad, the 49ers have to move. Hey, because it's time to get the hell up out of Santa Clara. Anyway. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Back up in this. Oh, hey, I'm Steve. Hey, hey, hey. I'm cool. Oh, okay, okay. I'm cool. I'm feeling that as well, though, and feeling you. Thanks, MC. Last season, you picked the 49ers every week. Yeah. I trusted you. Well. Bet and lost enough cash to pay down on a home atop of Knob Hill. I'm sorry, man. I'll be the end. Okay. We got this, man. <laughs> See you for dinner, because <laughs> it's your treat. <laughs> and I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, okay. And, and, and you knew it too last year, huh? I got called on it a few times. Even the games, and I, you know, my name and delusional have been won for a long time. I, 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 can't, I can never do it, fam. I just cannot look forward to a 49er loss. Even if I say we're going to squeak one out in the years past, I can't stand to think the 49ers are going to lose. So I did. MC should have known a little bit on his own. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's go check out the webcam and see exactly how you're feeling about your. As what is that? I love our new announcer. The touchdown, San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> Pop is funny, eh? <laughs> Let's go check out and see what you're talking about. Fam. <laughs> I got one of your favorite guys in mind. It's Russo. Russo, Russo. Russo, what's going on, man? What's up, bro? How you doing? Ah, oh, great, man. You know, I tell you, I, Russo, I, they couldn't get any better than this. I just hope the bottom doesn't fall out from us all of a sudden. But we need to talk about that right now, Russo, because here's the thing. The 49ers, I, I don't know how much you thought how the speed was going to be as, as far as the 49ers picking up and executing and looking like they look right now, but right now, they look really effective on offense. And I mean, they're executing some of those chunk plays. I was watching Balding break it down on a film. And I said, God, those plays, they're a thing of beauty. But, but Russo, what do you attribute the fairly good start? Or if you don't even think it's a fairly good start, you think you can do better? Where, 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 where are you thinking uh, on the, as far as the 49ers offensive execution is, is concerned? 
I mean, I, I was definitely glad to see Kyle open up the offense a lot <sighs> because we saw that the Tampa Bay game was extremely watered down mm. and it was just kind of, it seemed like more of like a clock control approach and he wasn't really, I don't know if he didn't trust Jimmy or what it was, but I don't know. It was just kind of, it was almost tough to watch a little bit, but obviously the defense is pretty much carrying the team right now. And I really think this last game with Cincinnati, I think Kyle, I think you put him, he put a little more trust into Jimmy and I think they open up the playbook a little bit. And I think you're seeing his confidence kind of build and that's, I mean, he's got weapons everywhere. So I think that's kind of what it's going to translate into as the season goes on. I think you're going to see a lot more of that than what you saw in Tampa Bay, put it that way. Ah, oh, God. And, you hit upon something there. When you say all his weapons too, where I think he's using like, Maybe he's got 15 or 20 weapons, right? But he's only using two or three. I, You like Dante Pettis. I've seen it on the chat. I know. What's going to happen with him? Russo, is there going to be a sudden? Is he going to wake up and have a, a, a some kind of a conniption and just go 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 nuts? And, and Or is he just going to continue to flow? Because as you're seeing, we're now seeing Debo Samuel take over that role that should be Dante's. Wait, what? And Jalen Hurd's not here yet. That's the other thing. Is Jalen Hurd's right? Uh, Jalen Hurd's coming in on week five, and you got Trent Taylor coming back in week five. So I don't know. I mean, uh, I haven't given up on Dante. It's just kind of like I'm. I'm kind of what everyone's been saying for the last two months. I think I'm finally starting to listen a little bit because it's <laughs> it's kind of concerning. I mean, he had more passing yards than he had receiving yards, right? So that's not really that's not really what you want out, of, forgot about out of a guy you draft in the second round. So. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of hoping that he gets it together. He did have the groin injury, so maybe that, maybe he's still not fully healed from that, what's going on there. You don't know how far back that goes. You, you just heard about it right before the season, really. So, True. I mean, it's it's a little bit concerning, and for the first time, I'm actually kind of, like, open to, like, seeing if maybe we could even trade him. Like, I don't know. It's kind of messed up to say, but, I mean, if you can get something good out of him, you have so many guys now. Debo Samuels emerged, Jalen Hurd. You know, Marquise Goodwin looks good again, but if he can stay healthy, that's a guy that I really think that can really contribute, especially as a deep threat. I mean, we saw what they did, and that's that's really how, how the game got started was Marquise Goodwin early on. So, and that when you start to stretch the field, that's going to open up the running game. It's going to open up everything else. So, you, 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 I don't know. Dante Pettis, uh, uh, it's a guy that I still like, and I'm, I haven't given up, but it's like I said, I'm, I'm finally starting to, to look a lot closer, put it that way. I agree, though. I, I got to tell you, though, you, you mentioned trade. It just my, The light bulb went off in my head. Trent Williams is available out there, possibly. But we don't deal with Washington because Washington hates the, the, uh, uh, God, the, the Shanahan, Shanahan family. Yeah. And, and, of course, you know, you, you've got the thing going on now with Jalen Hurd. I don't know how serious that is. But they're going to want a lot of capital and assets and things like that. I mean, you're not going to give up any draft picks, that, but like the number one draft pick. I guess if you're going to call for Twin Williams and say, listen, I, I, I need for you to come down to ground. Let me give you a third round pick for that, a fourth round pick, and let's call it a day. Uh, I'll send Dante Pettis to tie it up with a little red ribbon. And uh, let, can we do this? You know, I, here's the thing. I, I wonder about it. Everybody's making these trades. You've probably seen it all on social media. You bring in Trent Williams. Joe State is going to return in a few weeks. Is this an awkward situation that you don't want to be in? Do you go ahead and trust? Well, you know what? Let's go to school. Because I'm Coach Shannon is publicly saying that his, his confidence in Justin School holding down that left tackle spot uh, is the is the route he wants to go. Are you comfortable with that, or should we just mention Dante Pettis? Sort of segue that all together. Do you make a deal? Do you go into a, a potential situation where it's going to be difficult to deal with our expiring contracts next year? There's a whole lot of ramifications behind making a knee jerk reaction deal right now. I mean, but what are you thinking? Okay, so out of all the guys that are been speculated for trade possibilities, Trent Williams is the only guy that I'm actually that I want out of all of them. And I'm not necessarily like, oh my God, you got to get Trent Williams, but that's the guy that makes sense because you figure if if Joe Staley comes back, I mean, he's getting old. He's never really had a major injury like this. So, yeah. I mean, as much as I love Joe Staley, can we really count on him in six to eight weeks, which is the timeline? Okay, maybe he makes it back in the timeline, but can we count on him to be Joe Staley for yes. the rest of the season? Oh, so and that's the thing. And it's like, it's, it's, it's a very tricky situation, but Trent Williams is a guy like, I don't know if they're like like you said they don't really like Kyle Shanahan and the Snyders and the Shanahans do not like each other at all. So he might not they might not even want to entertain us. But if if you can bring in Trent Williams, I mean it comes with some money too. So it's not just what you're giving up. It's also money that needs to go into his contract because he's getting paid paid a lot of money as well. But um, 
I would feel confident in Skewell if they decided to just go with him, which is, which is what it seems like. Um, Kyle, he came out and said, look, I don't want to make two changes if I only need to make one change, right? So it seems like McGlinchey's staying on the right side. So Justin Skewell is a guy that I'm very confident in his run blocking, and he came in the game and he looked great. So he's a guy who can definitely run block. He's huge. It's just, it, can he pass protect? And we're talking about Jimmy Garoppolo here. So mm. if something happens, something happens where Justin Skewell is not looking good and something goes wrong, you know what I mean? It could lead to to further issues with the team. So, uh, I mean, we haven't seen it, so it's it's still unknown. But I I trust in Kyle. So if Kyle says that Justin School is the guy, I mean, let's go let's go with Justin School. I mean, who am I to second guess him? I, I mean, he's had a couple misses. Him and John have had a couple misses, but I feel like they've hit big time on quite a few guys. So and I love. They it. only kept seven guys, right? They only kept seven guys uh, yeah. on the. Uh, on the 53 for the offensive line. So that says a lot that they had faith in school to begin with. So, yeah. Well, because we, we lost Sean Coleman and, uh, that was, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. That was it. He was going to be the guy should this happen. And we lost him already on. I love the way you mentioned they've made a couple of mistakes. We know who they are. We're not going to mention them though, because you know, I still no. think there's a fan club for those, those couple of guys we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I listen. You know what? And for, and for the record, for the record, I don't want to cut you off. I don't think McKinnon is a mistake. Just so you know, I do not consider that a mistake. <laughs> I consider that just an injury, and things happen. And maybe they rushed him this like after the setback. Or you should have let him eight week him and just like let him chill out. But the signing, I think, was a great signing at the time, and the contract was it, it was all justified. So I, I agree. I know some people don't like that, but I think that was a good signing. Oh, so many. I, we're we're in a very. I mean, our minority numbers are really tiny because. Russo, man, I, I, I've argued with people. I'm going to stop doing it, too. By the way, if you're wa watching right now and I've had an argument with you uh, online, I'm sorry, I understand your pain, <laughs> and I, I'm apologizing now. I, cause, but I like Jerry McKinnon. I, Russo, I just wanted to see what he looked like. If Kyle Shanahan was that high on him, I wanted to know why. And a lot I know. Of we didn't get to see it. It's, uh, that yeah. sucks. So, I, anyway. Hey, you know what? We got another issue, though. Uh, D Ford in that knee, and I, I'm a little concerned with that now because um, I thought after the, he said he had that issue only once per year, normally right around training camp time, and that's extending now. We're in the third week of the season, and that knee's starting to bother him. I don't know if it's because he made contact or they didn't really explain that thoroughly, it seems. You may know more about that than I, than I did because I, I got so frustrated I stopped reading it. I says, you know, if he's right. going to continue to have this issue, uh, we got rid of DeMont, um, DeMontre uh, Moore, uh, Valuaga's on the practice squad. I don't know that they're going to equal anything that uh, D Ford was bringing. I'm already thinking now we're going to move Nick, but maybe do you move Nick to the to the other side and put your lesser talent on the other side? I, I imagine that's probably been thought about. But what are you thinking on this as far as D Ford goes? Are we in trouble? Here? Um, well, the initial the initial report during the game was they said uh, knee soreness or knee whatever and the game was basically in hand so he wasn't needed right so you're no matter what you're resting if anybody anybody important has any bit of, of an injury at all you're just taking him out mm. so I think that was more of a precaution but then right after the game I noticed they said that he had a thigh irritation or something like that cool. so it had nothing to do with nothing to do with the knee so I was kind of like Thinking back to when Bosa got injured in training camp, they were like, oh, he, he'll be okay, right? Yeah. And then the next day, it was like, all right, here's what's really happened. Like, he has a high ankle sprain. Ah. So for some reason, they're kind of giving you a watered-down rapport initially. For I don't know what, what the reasoning is. Are they trying to affect Pittsburgh's game plan? They don't want him to Ooh. know if, like, oh, he's good to go. Or maybe he's not. Or they already know he's not playing, and they're trying to just keep it on the hush. I mean, that could be a possibility. But I... Let's just say, let's just pretend D Ford is going to miss some time. I'm comfortable with Ronald Blair stepping in. Ah. I'm comfortable with Eric Armstead. I'm comfortable with all these guys: Solomon Thomas, Julian Taylor, DJ Jones, Sheldon Day, Buckner. I'm good with all these guys. I don't think we need to bring anybody else up, especially since Kyle seems really convinced in keeping three quarterbacks and there's seven wide receivers. There's not really any room. And now you're talking Joe Staley injury. He's not going on IR. So you don't really have all this roster flexibility. You know what I mean? True. So I kind of, I kind of, I'm expecting D4 to be okay, but I'm almost feeling like maybe we got hustled a little bit in this ah, trade. Like they, they yeah. knew something. I don't know. I was talking with my buddy with this last night and we we're all just kind of like, man, what's going on with D4? It's, that's, I mean, that's, that's one of our, uh, our best players. You know what I mean? That was, yeah. we gave up capital for him. We gave him a bunch of money. Huge. I mean, there is an out in his contract after next year. So we actually only, he's already paid a bunch and we owe him like 13 million more and then you can get out. Yeah. So it's not, 
it, it's still not good, but it doesn't seem as bad when you really dig into what Prague does. Obviously, we all know that he's the contract master. So, Amazing. I mean, that's a whole other issue, really. But as uh, for as for D Ford, I think my gut says he's going to be okay. I'm not expecting any lengthy absence or anything like that. I think he'll be all right, and I think he knows. Apparently, he knows what's going on with the knee, so I think he knows how to to manage it. So, I don't know. It's it, it, it's got to be something that could actually be fixed soon because he. he <laughs> That's a huge vacuum if he can't bring that D forward force from the other side because we were counting on that to dominate, and it has so far this season. Right. By the way, hey, fam, this is Russo. You see on the screen, get on, <laughs> click him up, go check out. He's got his own channel, and he does a great job, and you'll want to check out Russo. Hey, Russo, also, let us now touch upon what to expect from the Steeler game. I'm expecting a win. Uh, first off, <laughs> definitely I'm expecting a win. I mean, we all know that Ben Roethlisberger's out, right? He yeah. The elbow injury. So we're going to see Mason Rudolph. I uh, I don't really know much about him, honestly. I I just saw highlights, and I don't really pay attention to Oklahoma State football, so I haven't really watched him play in college. Uh, they took him in the third round, so it it seems somebody like they're high. They're pretty high on. And as soon as uh, Nick Foles' injury went down, they traded uh, Josh Dobbs to the Jaguars. So they're, that tells me that they have confidence in Mason Rudolph. So I'm curious to watch that Seahawks game over that second half and kind of see what he's, what, how he looks and stuff like that. James Conner is another guy who dealt with an injury. He left the game with a knee injury. So we might end up seeing Pittsburgh's second string offense minus Juju. You know what I mean? So I think uh, from... What I know about Pittsburgh, I'm, I'm expecting them to not really play well, honestly, because their defenses looked horrible. Uh, they did just trade for Minka Fitzpatrick, which is the guy that everybody was really high on. They wanted, so I think they have. I heard they have eight first rounders on defense. So I mean, on paper, yeah, maybe they have a good defense, but they they haven't looked good at all. They've been yeah. getting they got burned in the last the last two games, really. So and especially in the secondary, which is kind of surprising. But you know what? Pittsburgh's secondary is usually kind of suspect. They, they model their team a lot like Harbaugh. They've got that front right. line of fiends, and they got a secondary that's serviceable but not really good. So if that front, if T.J. Watt and guys uh, are contained, uh, they, they suffer big time, as they did last week. I mean, they couldn't even contain any of the, yeah. uh, the uh, Hawks receivers really well. So what are our guys going to do? They got Devin Bush. They got Joe Hayden. They got Watt. They just brought in Fitzpatrick. So, I mean, they have some players. And, they, you know, on offense, same thing. Juju. I like James Washington. I mean, they have some guys, Jalen Samuels. But, honestly, I just think that Kyle is going to absolutely scheme his way into a win if needed. Like, I, th I think, honestly, like, let's just say Pittsburgh comes in and they're just, they're just, oh, my God, Pittsburgh is, they came, they brought their A game. Yeah. I just think all they all they can do is just stay in the game. I, yeah. I think this defense, like, there's going to be way too much pressure on the quarterback. I mean, Nick Bosa is probably going to have a field day. Yeah. DeForest Buckner it finally seems like he's, you know. He's coming around. Yeah, he's yeah. finally coming around. The linebackers, Quan Alexander, I mean, we saw what he could do. He, we didn't even get to see him in Tampa Bay. He got he got taken out of the game in the first quarter. So mm. we, he gets to play a game, and he was putting on some big hits, and he had the interception. So this defense, I mean, five turnovers. They're tied for the league lead in turnovers. I mean, you're talking about a, a guy who, I don't know how many career starts Mason Rudolph has, but it's got to be less than five. You can count it on one hand. So... I'm expecting this uh, this defense to really take over and win us this game, even if the offense, for some reason, isn't playing well. So I that's, agree. that's what I'm thinking. That's I agree. What I, think. I agree. And you know what? The thing is, I, I, I really do, and I, and I know that I'm probably going to get hit up for this, but listen, I think the 49ers pass rush, I think it trumps the Hawks pass rush. They look like oh, they yeah. were in trouble last week. They've seen nothing yet. And our secondary... <laughs> I really like our chance in this one. So the homecoming puts us up at 3-0, which nobody probably seen coming except for a few of us. But hey, what's the score you got on this game? What's my score? Um, I would say just a wild guess. I think the 49ers are breaking 30. I would say 30, 34 to 34-17. We double them up. I would we, say hey, something like that. We like that 17, don't we? we yeah. you, you realize, of course, we've got a string of 17s going already. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we'll <laughs> stick with the 17. 34-17. That sounds actually pretty good. And now I, that you bring it up. And, and I think the only reason they're getting that is because it was garbage time. But that kid, when, uh, yep. when we ran for the touchdown the other day, I said, oh, you know, that's 
they didn't have to give that one up, but they did. I, and maybe they were a little relaxed for a moment. I mean, John Ross, we know he's fast. Guys, put a blanket behind him. Don't put it in front of him. If you get beat I, by a step, it's your dead meat. They did. So, yeah. That's all right. We'll, we'll survive. You don't like that. to see those garbage touchdowns, but. Yeah. I, I mean, let's. I, you're, now we're like, we're nitpicking, you know what I mean? Because the 49ers have. <laughs> They've been completely <laughs> locked down for the first two weeks. They have True. the most points scored in the division, and they have the fewest points allowed in the division. So, ah. and still we're ranked where behind the Hawks and the Rams. I, I really. <laughs> uh, so anyway, but so I did see Vegas's line, and I actually were a touchdown, uh, almost a touchdown favorite. Eight, six eight points. It's I, saw, I saw eight, eight now. points. I saw seven, yeah. six points something. Yeah. Okay. I saw eight, so that that's, that's. I think Vegas is tired of losing money because they've been making San Fran underdogs and pickums, and I think weeks. they've been getting abused in in the books, and they're that. finally coming to their senses. So they deserve it too. Yeah, ah, can't take a week off and then get on to the Browns. And the Browns, I we'll, we'll talk about that a little later. Because go ahead. Oh, one more thing I wanted to throw in about uh, pit, uh, the scheduling is. Seattle played the Bengals first, and so we got some tape on the Bengals in Seattle, and then we got to play the Bengals. And now they played Pittsburgh, and now we got a little bit of tape on Pittsburgh. We get to play Pittsburgh. So I think the scheduling is actually very favorable these early on, and then we get the early bye, get everybody healthy. So, like, as this, as I'm really looking at what's going on with the scheduling, I'm really liking it because I didn't even think to, like, look at week to week who plays who before us. You know what I mean? I was looking at overall opponents and stuff like that. Sure. So. It definitely very favorable that we got tape on these guys because we basically play the similar defense to Seattle, you know. Right. What I mean? So we, we should know how to what what works and what doesn't work, stuff like that. Right, so right, right. I think that's going to definitely help. That's true. They paved the way for us, and and somebody mentioned that the other day. Uh, I was laughing about that because you know had not thought about that. So thank you, Hawks, for wherever you fail, we will succeed just for that same <laughs> reason, just like you mentioned yep. too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Russo. For real. Good stuff, fam. I'm gonna give you three, two, one. Give me the traditional holla out. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Let's go, Niners! Yes. <laughs> I can't do it like you and Rico. You and Rico. I mean, you see, guys. See, for Russo, that is. I gotta give a shout out to my boy, my Jersey boy. But I can't do it like you. <laughs> it's okay. That's acceptable. I wanted you to be Russo, and that represents Russo. Brilliant yep. and loud to a, a level. Of intelligence. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do, bro. <laughs> Thank you, Russo! Hey, Russo's bringing it. He's got his own channel. I got the link there for you. Check out Russo whenever you get your time. Man knows his football. Russo, I'll check you out a little later on. Bam, I, I missed you last time. I had to give you my score. I'm gonna give it to you now. Oh, I ain't never gonna miss a score. You know what? Part of the fun about predicting how the potency, the prowess of this team is to predict the score. Now, we've been, we've been hanging around. I, the 49ers, I think they're averaging around 35 points, right? Remember how we're always saying things like, well, 49ers are going to average a lot of points this year, so ain't no need in even thinking about other than the defense. All we got to do is hold teams down. Well, that's exactly what you're doing. I say the 49ers stay upwards north of about 30 to 35 points. But did, hey, didn't we say 25 points was going to be the floor for us during the offseason? The 49ers have blown that out the water in the first two games. And the defense. You know that 17 points they keep allowing? I'm not giving that seven extra up this week. I say the defense gets even sharper this week. We need to get D Ford back. He's having some little problems with his knee because that is like part of what makes that defense so crazy. Potent. So D Ford comes back this week. Maybe, maybe not, but the defense is still probably going to be pretty severe. Nick is starting to feel healthier than he was from what Kyle Shanahan says. Nick is healthier coming out of this last game than he was the first game. Okay, that's all I need to hear. Good. 44 to 10. Yes, I said it. Ben Roethlisberger, Mason Rudolph is not. I think they're going to be a little, a little, I think they're going to be a little shaky. They don't travel well even with Big Ben. They're going to bring Mason Rudolph into Santa Clara. I say 40-40. That could be coming up short here. This could be the blowout game and good timing too. Cause <laughs> Levi's is going to jump in and fam. I see you later on. We're going to make some predictions on this game. <laughs> I know it's going to be fun this week. <laughs> hey, hit that like, share, and subscribe. Count me up on out of here. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nine, 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 nine,